Good morning and welcome to That's My Farm. I'm Michaela Demont, your guest host, and I'm here in Chase, Kansas, talking with Doug Keesling about his crops, his livestock, and his advocacy for agriculture. Stay tuned and we'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Good morning and welcome to That's My Farm. I'm Michaela DeMott, your guest host, and I'm here in Chase, America with Doug Keesling. First off, Doug, tell me a little bit about uh, the operation you have here. All right, Keesling Farms here was once Keesling Seed Farms under my dad and my grandfather. I'm the fifth generation to run and live here at this facility. And uh, we have a wheat, corn, soybean, milo, and cattle operation here on the Santa Fe Trail. Okay, and then tell me a little bit, I know this uh, farm has a unique history. Tell me a little bit about the history of the farm. Yeah, there was a doctor who actually homesteaded right here at this location and would treat settlers as they were coming by on the Santa Fe Trail. Mm -hmm. Um, so he had a unique position because we find uh, different plants and stuff here that he used as medicine. We also have a cemetery in our pasture from some of the mistakes of his practice, I guess you could say, or, or the people who did not make it out here. You, know, you think about the hard times that we go through sometimes and what we complain about, mm -hmm. but the settlers had it a lot harder than what we've ever had it. So, sure. um, Talk a little bit about, um, I know you have crops and cattle here. Talk a little bit about that. Okay, we uh, raise a lot of wheat um, in rotation with corn and beans and milo and uh, soybeans. This year, the last couple of years has been interesting because we've gone from a drought to this year kind of a wet <laughs> time. So uh, we had tremendous yields on our wheat this year uh, with prices being down, uh, but ended up kind of being about the same as mm -hmm. in the past years. But it's interesting to have those good crops and we're harvesting corn right now mm -hmm. and those yields are way up, so. Great. And I know you kind of have an interesting story about how you got back to the family farm. So tell me a little bit about your your history of coming back to the farm. Sure. When I was in high school, I didn't want anything to do with the farm. Uh, everything it seemed like that I did with my parents, I was bound to determine I was going to leave. Sure. And so ended up going to school for botany and then ended up switching to journalism. Went to California for a while and took a job out there. And um, then with my mom getting sick with cancer, came mm -hmm. back to help and I've never left since. But it's been an interesting road because uh, I do a lot of ag advocacy and the journalism degree that I have has been able to help mm -hmm. me promote you know, the love of agriculture to, to the world. How has the transition from generation to generation been here at the farm? Actually, ours has been very smooth. I know some farm families, that's a struggle. Uh, I'm the fifth generation and we're already planning for our six generations. I have four children mm -hmm. and I'm wanting to go ahead and try to help them get set up as where they can have a future forward. But we've been able to do this fairly well. My dad decided to retire five years ago and uh, when he did, he went to pursue some other interests and I kind of took over full time. But prior to that, we have several businesses here and he just kind of started turning me loose with one business at a time and was able to kind of help that transition then as I could grow and learn about those different uh, entities. Sure. We will be right back after these messages from our sponsors. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Supply. Summer is busy at Tarwater Farm and Home. We have just about everything you'll need for your summer projects and we're consistently competitively priced. Tarwaters can help make your grass and garden grow. And we have a huge variety of equipment to cut it. If you have a farm, Tarwaters has the products and equipment to keep it going strong. And our expanded parking lot will make it even more convenient to shop. So come see us at Tarwater Farm and Home in Topeka. Highways 40, 83, and I-70 come together right here in Oakley. Roads that lead to businesses, to magnificent rock formations, to scenic vistas, to places where legends were made. Roads that lead us home. Discover Oakley the gateway to western Kansas. 
Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn. For livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population, the farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities, big enough to serve, small enough to care. Good morning and welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Michaela DeMott, your guest host, and I am here with Doug in front of his cornfield and on some conservation land. And tell me a little bit about how uh, you use your cons like conservation here on the farm. Sure, we're standing in a CP33. It's filter strips that go all the way around our farms. Mm -hmm. The majority of our uh, pieces of land have these. Okay. They work for multiple purposes. One, they clean up, this farm has lots of terraces, mm -hmm. so it cleans up any water coming in and out of mm -hmm. the farm so that we're doing a better job with the environment and all of this. Also, this is perfect hunting grounds um, and nesting grounds mm -hmm. for pheasants, upland birds, quail, turkey. The deer love to lay in here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, with four children and I enjoy to hunt, it's, it's nice to be able to come out here on a weekend, mm -hmm. spend time with your family and your kids uh, to be able to go hunting. Mm -hmm. And then also, we also bring other people out and when we're educating them about farm and, and farm life, a lot of times hunting comes up because it's something that they'll do. Mm -hmm. So we like to bring them out here and we'll walk these strips mm -hmm. and to be able to do this. So I guide pheasant and quail hunts also okay. in order to do this. And you know, also we do this as um, something that we can give back to the community. Mm -hmm. um, my son uh, was in the hospital a little bit. Children's Mercy treated him so well in Kansas City mm -hmm. that I, I donate hunts either to Children's Mercy or St. Jude's and it's something that I can give back to the community by donating pheasant hunts and then guide those hunts mm -hmm. back to the community too. Okay, so. Great. so we're here in front of your cornfield so tell me a little bit about um, the crop and land side of things on your farm. Sure, we got a cornfield behind us. Uh, this isn't considered to be one of our most productive fields but this year it is uh, doing very well. It's a it's a blow sand field with high elevation changes as you can see that really drops off behind us and uh, this year the corn is doing tremendous. Um, dry land yields uh, what we've cut so far have been running 140 to 150 bushels on this mm -hmm. which is tremendous for this piece of, of soil mm -hmm. and so we're really blessed by all of the all of that to be able to have this good of corn uh, on here in this mm -hmm. type of year but uh, we will be after we harvest the corn will be planting wheat back so it will be no-tilled right into these stalks mm -hmm. uh, shortly after then we'll have two years worth of wheat on there then we'll go back and either double crop beans or milo back into those um, and then whichever we choose we choose the opposite of those two the following year um, and then it'll go back to corn and then after the corn then it'll go continue mm -hmm. right on in with the double crop wheat and mm -hmm. back into the rotation again. Okay, and what are some other practices? I know you do some organic type farming here. Talk sure. about that. Sure. All of the fertilizer we use on our crops uh, across our whole farm is organic mm -hmm. chicken litter from an egg laying facility that's only four miles from this site. So uh, we stockpile the chicken litter as it comes out every week, spread it that week mm -hmm. um, in order to keep flies and insects down and use that as a source of organic manure. Mm -hmm. It's natural, it's high in phosphorus, trace minerals, um, and it works perfect for the soil. Mm -hmm. And it's a way to keep not only the crops, but also our grasses going uh, in our pastures and in these, in these conservation reserves. Mm -hmm. And it's a natural thing so that we feel very comfortable that we're doing the right thing for the environment. Mm -hmm. So speaking of your grasses, I know you have some unique things about some of your land here and some history to this farm here. Sure, um, almost all of the land that we farm is owned by family members. Mm -hmm. So my father, myself, I have two older sisters that each have a piece of land that they mm -hmm. keep. Um, even my two sons already have a piece of land that's in their name. Mm -hmm. um, and so this piece of dirt, uh, my grandfather bought during the depression uh, for $192. He bought 160 acres here and it was his father-in-law's. And so his father-in-law during the depression, uh, the bank was in the process of foreclosing on this piece of dirt. Mm -hmm. And he went in and paid the loan off 
and got it. Um, I'm sure that that made extra bonus points for a son-in-law to do that. Uh, so even back then, you know, I'm sure people went for bonus mm -hmm. points. Um, and so this was kind of an interesting piece of history. And I now own this piece of, of land and uh, really enjoy the history and all that goes behind that. Mm -hmm. I believe that God only made so much land and that we need to do the right thing by mm -hmm. it and protect it and do the right thing for our environment because I plan on living here all my life. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. We'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas, we work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but yeah, we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. By tall grass commodities, big enough to serve, small enough to care. Good morning and welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm back here with Doug in front of his Red Angus herd of cattle. So Doug, why Red Angus? Well, we, uh, several years ago we bought seven that were Red Angus Pold Hereford crosses. Mm -hmm. And then we went and bought uh, we, uh, multiple bulls that have all been purebred Red Angus. So they're getting more and more red all the time. Mm -hmm, sure. But there's still that little bit of Pold Hereford in them. Mm -hmm. But it's funny because as you look back, as we sh all should in history, when my grandfather had his cattle herd, it was all dairy cattle. And when my dad graduated high school, they all disappeared off the farm because there wasn't the extra manpower to help. And so dad always complained about that. I remember hearing that growing mm -hmm. up. But the, it, history tends to repeat itself. So my dad bought Pold Herefords. And when I was the last child to graduate, and when I left home, all of the Pold Herefords disappeared off the farm for several years mm -hmm. until I came back. So it's interesting always has history does repeat itself. Mm -hmm. Sure. So uh, talk a little bit about what the cattle have been grazing on here. And I know you have a unique piece of land here on your farm. So talk a little bit about those things. Sure, this one is not a native pasture here, uh, man-made. Um, and we have getting ready to turn them out on some cover crops. In with our crop rotation, mm -hmm. we always pick one that's near one of our pastures and plant a mixture of sedan, uh, any leftover milos or, or anything else that's left uh, mm -hmm. just to clean up the warehouse. Um, we usually mix it in with some millets, um, cow peas, few a other, few other interesting things from year to year, whichever we think is, might be best for mm -hmm. that piece of ground or that year. And we plant it as a cover crop mixture. Mm -hmm. um, and this one's planted on the, on the other side of the fence and they're gonna be turned out here tomorrow mm -hmm. on it. And so that, that way they can graze it and continue. So that's the way we're able to keep most of the herd together uh, or a bigger chunk of the herd together in one spot instead mm -hmm. of rotating. And you mentioned the one native piece. We have one piece that's still native grass. And so uh, we try to take extra care of it because you can still see the Santa Fe Trail uh, wagon ruts through that piece. And it's really an interesting piece of history because as we go on further in time, there's less and less of those native ones. Uh, you can still see the buffalo wallers and the, and the wagon wheel tracks. And so it's just a neat part of our family history. Awesome, great, thank you. We'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. My name is Karen Cope and I have multiple sclerosis. When you have MS, on the outside you look great, but you know what's really going on in the inside is chronic body pain, chronic fatigue, and there's lots of days that I'd wake up and say, 
people, please God, help me get through this day. You know, after stem cells, Chloe, my youngest daughter, she was asked by my father-in-law, how's your mom doing? And Chloe said, uh, Grandpa, I've never had a mom like this before because she was eight when, when I was diagnosed and she really had no other memory of me but being sick. It's really the simple things that we do as a family, like play cards and, and to be able to win at cards, you know, they all laugh because I used to repeat myself and say, what hand are we on? You know, what's, where are we at? And it's just been really a, a true blessing from God and we're, we're really thankful. You don't have to be a farmer or rancher to become a Kansas Farm Bureau member. Anyone can join. As a member, you'll get discounts on things like hotels and entertainment, health and wellness services, cell phone plans, and more. You'll also strengthen the lives of your fellow Kansans and help build strong, prosperous communities through agriculture advocacy and education. Join us today. Visit kfb.org slash join to learn more. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Good morning and welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Michaela DeMont, your guest host here with Doug Kiesling. And we're going to talk a little, about, a little bit about his involvement in the Wheat Commission. So first off, talk to me about your involvement in Kansas Wheat Commission. Sure, the Kansas Wheat Commission has helped farmers for 50 some years across Kansas, whether it be research and development, whether it be education around the world, mm -hmm. and several other facets. Um, let's talk about some of that. So for every bushel of wheat that we raise here on our farm, there's two pennies that go to the Wheat Commission through the checkoff funds, and those wheat those funds go to promote uh, new varieties mm -hmm. on, back on our farms, new wheat research for disease and insect protection. They also go back to uh, help go in with other funds as matching funds through the federal government to fund uh, U.S. wheat associates across mm -hmm. the world to promote growing markets like mm -hmm. Latin America or Africa or things like this. Um, they also go into promotions and education in order to educate the people, whether it be an urban market, um, to combat celiac disease, and, and to go to funding in order to help find a cure for right. something like that. All of those are important things. Mm -hmm. So how do those private funds um, support that research? Um, they're using that through the Wheat Commission as a board. We sit down and we, with farmer input, mm -hmm we try to figure out what is the most important things for that year and that those funds can be used for. So we may have part of it maybe for developing a new wheat variety in Kansas uh, so that we can have a new Everest or a new Canmark or uh, any of those new varieties. And so that we, as farmers, we can raise more. It might be in order to um, have disease protection and stuff like this. Um, then it goes a step further by promoting wheat in other ways. That goes into developments of the uh, International Grains Program, promoting it internationally by bringing in foreign trade buyers that way. It might be because we developed the Heartland Plant Innovation Center sure. that's there in the building also. And the Heartland Plant Innovation Center has greenhouses, office space, and genetics labs where we're working on double haploids. This ties back because it helps a program like Alan Fritz's develop new wheats for Kansas in a shorter amount of time mm -hmm. for the farmer. So it benefits that farmer. Perfect. And how do those things benefit um, you here on your farm? Oh, well, all of those, by being able for Alan to be able to develop a, a variety of wheat in seven years by the use of double haploids and marker technology, mm -hmm. rather than taking 10 plus years, gets it to my farm faster in order so that we can increase our production here on a local level. Perfect. Great. Thank you. We'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. 
Welcome to our bar B, 8,000 plus square feet Western store with something for everyone in the family. We have boots, belts, hats, jeans, anything you could want to outfit you and your horse. Come visit our line of saddles. We have 400 plus new and used saddles in stock. We offer tack, grooming supplies, head stalls, breast collars, you name it, we've got it for you and your horse. That's R Bar B, one mile east of Highway 4 on Northeast 39th. R Bar B, where Western is a way of life. Hi, I'm Kim Mandarin with Hardy Insurance. I'm here to help you with all of your farm and ranch needs. When it comes to protecting your operation and your family, you need a name you can trust at a price you can afford. Call me today or visit hardyaviationins.com. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Good morning and welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Michaela DeMott, your guest host, and Doug is going to talk a little bit, little bit about his involvement outside of Kansas. So I know you're really involved in the state of Kansas. Talk to me a little bit about your involvement um, outside of Kansas and internationally. Sure. When it comes to agriculture, a lot of times we cannot think just right here on this farm, in this county, and sometimes even in this state. We have to think globally. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to work on several fronts in order to help out Kansas wheat farmers sell other products. Um, lately we had a group of Cuban millers in Kansas. We showed them around, uh, went through Kansas City with them, uh, Topeka, Manhattan, showed them the Innovation Center mm -hmm. that we talked about. And this helps because it helps to educate foreign buyers, whether it be from Cuba, Mexico, the Middle East, Africa, any of our major buyers, in order to uh, help them understand how we operate and the rules and the how to write a contract in order so they get the product that they want. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one of some of the main things. So I've traveled a lot, whether it be to Mexico, uh, lately several times to Cuba, in order to open free trade up there. That really affects us a huge amount in Kansas because Kansas just got done raising a bumper wheat crop. Mm -hmm. We have piles of grain on the ground in certain places around, and we're, we're starting fall harvest. I'm starting mm -hmm. corn harvest now, and the elevators want to move this. If we could open up the embargo to Cuba, you're talking about 10% of the wheat that's raised right here in Kansas mm -hmm. could be shipped down to Cuba immediately and be used by people right away. Mm -hmm. um, they're buying right now from the European Union, uh, from Canada, so logistics-wise, we have an advantage. Mm -hmm. So if we could open that up, sell that, then that 10% would get rid of a huge amount of stockpiles of grain mm -hmm. here. Um, we also work a lot with U.S. Wheat Associates over abroad, working on projects like food aid mm -hmm. uh, that Jerry Moran has talked about a lot in some bills that he's working on. Also, the flour fortification for Africa, mm -hmm. because sometimes bread is some of their only staple crops that they get on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. so the end goal is to sell more U.S. Mm -hmm. ag products, uh, and I want to sell wheat from my farm. For sure. So you talked a little bit about education. Tell me about the work that you do in D.C. to educate, uh, to kind of bridge the gap for agriculture. Well, sometimes with agriculture, we have representatives that represent our individual states. We have to educate them on what that means. So we have to educate them that 10% of the wheat crop here in Kansas could be shipped to Cuba, for instance, as we mm -hmm. talked about, and how that makes a difference, how that could raise the tailgate price that every one of us that sells wheat and how that could help us out economically. Mm -hmm. When it's all about supply and demand from a farmer and a farmer is a price taker. So if we can raise the price of wheat mm -hmm. just a little bit by raising the demand, then that helps every farmer out in this region. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be educated not only about things here on our farm, but mm -hmm. about what's going on in DC, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be directly with food safety, uh, food regulations, mm -hmm. maybe it's about our fertilizers that we mm -hmm. use or chemicals in order just to cut down on the rules and regulations from an EPA standpoint sure. that we deal with. So there's just so many things mm -hmm. that we could talk about on all of those that, yeah. you know, we end up going to DC and, and sure. trying to do an educational basis on them. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Doug, and thank you for watching this episode. Stay tuned every Friday morning for another episode of That's My Farm. Closed captioning brought to you by Egg Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at eggpromosource.com.